Hello everyone and welcome back along to the channel. Today I am out shooting with this. Yes, it's a cardboard box wrapped in gaffer tape. And while I am heading out to wherever it is I'm going today, let me show you how I put this together and the results so far. So for this panel camera, I am using an ordinary brown cardboard box. To ensure it is light tight, I am going to wrap it up in gaffer tape. I did make a small mistake at this point. The gaffer tape I was using turned out to be not light tight. I only discovered this during developing my first exposure. After some quick checks for light leaks, I found that one layer of the tape allowed light to pass through it, but thankfully doubling it up made it light tight. So be sure to check this with the gaffer tape you're using. Next, I cut a hole in the front of the box to where I'll be putting the pinhole. For the first few exposures, I decided to use a 0.3 laser drilled pinhole. But later on, I added a homemade pinhole to compare the results. Again, I simply gaffer taped it over the hole on the front of the box. Experimenting with the camera with different exposure times is certainly fun, but it can be costly and a waste of photographic paper. So I'll show you how I determine the aperture I need. First, I measure the focal length. This is the distance from where the photographic paper will sit to the pinhole. On this box, it is 100 mil. Going on to the Zero Image website, they have a pinhole calculator. I input the focal length and the pinhole size, and this gives me an f-stop of f333.33. It also tells me the optimum pinhole size for this camera, which is 0.4 mil. So the pinhole I've got will be absolutely fine. Next, time to turn the lights off and the red light on. The paper I'm using is Ilford photographic paper. And the great thing about using photographic paper is that it can be handled under a red light, which makes things so much easier. Carefully removing it from the bag and avoiding getting too many fingerprints on it. The side you want facing up is the side with emulsion. That is the slightly glossy side. To secure it into the box, all I'm doing is rolling up some sticky tape to make some sticky tabs, which I'll place in the box first. If the paper you have is too big, you can easily trim this stuff up to make it fit. Placing the paper in the box, I gently tap it down with a piece of cardboard, avoiding any fingerprints. Now, close it up and tape it up. For the shutter, I'm using some electrical insulation tape. As it's not as sticky as gaffer tape, gaffer tape would probably rip the pinhole off every time I open the shutter. But this stuff works perfectly. So simply place it over the pinhole and fold it up on one end to make a little pulley tab. And we're done, ready to go out and shoot. With the laser drilled pinhole, I captured three images. The first was of a wheel and a derailleur section on a bike, which showed some promising results. Next was a close up of one of my dog's old toys sitting on the windowsill. For my third and final with the laser drilled, I captured some flowers in the garden looking up at them. All these exposure times were around 60 seconds. So making your own pinhole, I'm simply going to get a drinks can and cut a small section out. Please, please be careful. If you are not responsible, please ask someone who is. Thankfully, avoiding removing any fingers, take a pin or a sewing needle, which would probably work better, but I am using a drawing pin. 
Placing the cut section onto a hard surface, push the pin in so it leaves an indent, but not necessarily gone all the way through. From here, I'm going to sand it back, which will cut through to make the hole. Sand in both sides of the aluminium to remove any imperfections or short, sharp edges. Also, the thinner, the better when it comes to image quality. A quick clean and check, and it's all good. So here, I'm just going to quickly remove the old pinhole. I also wanted to do a quick visual check against the other pinhole, which is 0.3. Both visually look about the same, so I'm going to keep my aperture of f333 the same. Now, all that's left is to stick it on the box. It was time to reload with paper and to get back out. My first photo with my DIY pinhole was a bike again, and seeing the result certainly seems that everything is working fine. So, and that brings us to here. So I'm gonna head out in a minute. Unfortunately, it's a little bit wet and uh, cardboard and rain don't go too well, so hopefully it will be fine. Um, but to show you what I am using, the app I use is the simply called Light Meter by WB Photo. Uh, this app is free, it is available on Android and has recently been released to Apple users. There is also a paid version which allows a few other features um, and also it supports the developer if you like it. Now we open up this app and first we're going to want to put our set aperture to what your camera is going to be. So for mine, it is F333. So I go down to custom values and I can add my aperture in at the top. I've already done it down here. So then we go to camera meter and here you can select your aperture, F333. So your ISO for paper is normally around six so we make sure the six is selected and the bottom left where it says sec, which is your exposure times, you leave that highlighted red. Everything else which is in blue will remain the same or the top two at least and it will adjust your exposure times to suit your f-stop and your ISO. So on a day like today we are going to get some pretty long exposures with paper. If you're inside certainly expect exposure times off around a few hours no problem. Now you will need to calibrate this app. Most of the time, I've had this app on several phones and loads of the time it's absolutely fine. This one is two and a half stops out. All you have to do is compare it to a digital camera, take some photos, set the values on this the same and see if it is reading the same. If not, you can adjust the, uh, adjust it all down here. Um, like my said, mine's two and a half stops out and that now reads fine. So make sure you do check that so you know you're all good. Anyway, let's head out and let's capture our single photo. So I think I'm going to try an image of this boat um, from either side, what have we got? Maybe from here, it's raining, it's not good. All right, let's get a quick meter reading. So that is taking me into about two minutes, two minutes, get some more shadows, two minutes, 30 maybe. So I'm gonna go probably about two minutes 20 on this. So the wind's picking up and I've got more rain coming in, so I've got to be quick. I'm gonna put some stones on top. Oh, it's covered in ants. Oh, 
I'm needling on down here. Needling on an ant's nest. Ugh. I should keep it secure. Get my time up. Let me open up. I've got to try and not lose this. Get my shutter. Five, four, three, two, one. That'll do. Get the ants off. Don't want to be taking them home. So that is that done. Time to head home and develop. So you join me up in my dark space here. We have got the developer. I'm using an Ilford PQ Universal. Uh, if you struggle with the dilution calculations, uh, there's an app, uh, Devit, which gives you a calculator on there for the amount of water you want and the ratios, and it's brilliant. Here will be my fixer, which I'm just using the Ilford Rapid Fixer. This is reusable, and this is just water. So that's where I'll do a wash before taking it down and rinsing under a tap. I've got my photo exposed to paper in here. I've got another sheet which I've done yesterday, so I'll develop that as well. So let's get the lights off. First, I'm going to quickly open up the camera. There inside is our exposed sheet. So I'm going to get my other piece, which I have stored in here. So I don't actually go by any timing on this. I just place it in and uh, keep an eye at first. I go face down, just a little agitate and just let it sit. Probably around 30 seconds to a minute. Just a little agitate, not too much. Now at this point I just keep an eye on it until it looks good before putting it into the fixer. So this image is actually off a fishing rod leaning up over the camera. So that's looking good. So I'm going to take that out and put that straight into the fixer. And then place my wand from today in. Again, exactly the same. And just let it sit. We'll start seeing the image appear. This is something which is so good with paper to actually see the image appear. It's such a fantastic feeling to see the results. Yeah. I think this little line which is appearing, I think it was poking out of the developer for a minute. So that's looking good. All right, I'm gonna chuck this one over into the wash and get this one ready for a fix. It's looking pretty good now. Let's get that in there. Once they're both in there, safe to turn the lights back on. So that's looking good. And so is that. But this little line, like I said, I think it was just poking out of the developer while I was developing, so it's a little bit, but that'll be fine. Right, let's go rinse them under a towel. 
quick wash, clip up, and hang up. So now you've got your negative images, how do you turn these into a positive? There are three ways I'm going to show you. So the first is take a photo of it, then upload into your favourite app, and from here you can crop it in. and change it from a negative to a positive. And from there you can go on to do other little adjustments etc to how it would suit you. Next up is to flatbed scan take your negative, slap it on the scanner, close it up, scan it in, and from here I'm going to open it up in GIMP. GIMP is a free image editing software, and if I go to invert, that will change it from a negative to a positive. Then just get rid of the saturation so it's a proper black and white. And from here again you can edit it to how and what suits you. Third and final and the most fun is to do a contact print. So for a contact print I'm going to print this image, you turn the lights off, get a fresh sheet of paper and have that facing up, this directly facing onto it, then with a bit of glass on top just to squeeze it all into place. Okay, I'm going to put a bit of card over this turn a light on and just every second or so move it down a tab. One, two, three, off. And then we're going to develop this. So a quick look at this, probably shorter the better, I think this was three seconds, maybe a quick one and a bit. One. And there we go, we have a positive print. So I really hope you have enjoyed this video and maybe it has inspired you to get a bit of old junk and turn it into a pinhole camera and get out and be creative and explore. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe and I shall see you next time. Thanks all for watching everyone, see you soon.